Greetings Otaku Faithful and thank you oh so very much for joining me here tonight. For those of you discovering this video for the first time, those of you who are new to my videos and new to my channel, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Larry Williams, the self-proclaimed Commander-in-Chief, and I run a channel, a following, a coalition known simply as OAW. But for my subscribers, my frequent viewers, my Facebook and Twitter followers, the Otaku Faithful, you guys have been waiting 15 months to hear that slogan, that catchphrase, that battle cry. So without further ado, let's kick off the fall 2015 season right here on Otaku Assemble! Weekly and finally here to bring you all the latest in this week's OAW videos. And to kick off my fall 2015 schedule, I've decided to give you all my review on the brand new DC and CW animated web series, Vixen. Now, nah. Uh, originally, my plan was to review each episode of Vixen weekly as it was released. However, Vixen is a it's a 30 minute animated pilot broken up into six parts. So each episode is, is about roughly about five minutes. Um, after watching the first two, I was like, no, nah, there, there's no way I'm going to have enough material to make a full video on on a weekly basis. So I decided to wait until this week when the sixth and final episode aired so that I can watch all six of them and give you all my analysis of the entire pilot. And so here we go. So, um, oh, and for the record, for those of you all who have yet to see the web series, feel free. I have the link in the description box below. Uh, check out the web series and then come back to this review or you can check out my review first and then check out the web series So anywho, so to give my thoughts on Vixen now uh, Vixen is based off of the DC uh, Comic superhero of the same name and as I mentioned before this is in essence a pilot So the origin story is covered in this um, pretty much everything we would need to know about the character to get a gist of who she is or enough of a gist of who she is it's in the uh, it's in the these six episodes so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get my general thoughts on it and then get into more detail about specific things about the series later in the review so general thoughts on the series I think given what it is a 30 minute animated pilot I think it did a decent job getting the point across we get we, we get we know who Vixen is how she has, how she got her powers, how they work. Um, we ha we have a conflict. We have an antagonist. Um, the character has motives. Um, there's an objective within the six episodes. So all of the bases are covered for the most part. Now, where I think the series falls short in this. The fact that this is coming from uh, the CW's DC Comics wheelhouse, this is in the same universe and within the same continuity as Arrow and the Flash TV shows and of course uh, Legends of Tomorrow which will be premiering in the spring. This is within that same world because even Barry and Oliver appear in this miniseries. So, that being said, we've seen them do better character introductions in the main shows. I mean, Firestorm in season one of Flash, that, that was a fantastic character introduction. And it's something that uh, I'll, I'll talk about this more when I do my uh, expectations for Flash season two, which uh, will be later this week. But when you take in consideration all of the character introductions that they did in Flash, for an example, you might think it's a one episode, one shot, boom run and done you know okay we got that character we know who he is okay no they actually spent time they took multiple episodes building up to firestorm and introducing him they took multiple episodes building up characters like uh captain cole characters um i mean even cold sister like we they've taken the time to develop these characters so that it's not just the sense of okay we're intro we, we're introduced to the character we 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 know that character okay now we can just throw them into the fray and see them do whatever they do no they took the time out to develop them what i'm saying is this number one and this is the most important thing too i learned 
about a month after the announcement of this series that Vixen will actually appear, I believe, in Arrow this season. So that being said, the pilot lacked the time needed to really develop her into a character. That's pretty much the point I'm trying to get at. And I feel that it would have been stronger if they would have just waited to introduce her in Arrow. Um, since that's, I believe that's the series she's supposed to appear in. I think that, I mean, you're talking about an hour episode, so really you have about 48 minutes minus the commercials, right? Well, with an additional 18 minutes, I think that this pilot could have benefited greatly because I just, I just feel like there are certain, there's just certain cues and certain things they didn't touch upon that they really really could have developed they really could have built on and really could have gotten a strong solid foundation for the character so so let me get into more detail about the things i'm talking about now the cool thing and the reason why i was excited about this series was because number one vixen is an, an obscure dc heroine um, she's probably a C-lister. She's probably not even a B-lister within the DCU. She's probably a C-lister. And for me personally, I have not read a lot of Vixen. I have not. Most of what I know from the character comes from her, um, her portrayal in Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, the, uh, the Bruce Timm animated series from the early 2000s. Now, here's the thing. And this was sort of one of my disappointments about the series. There is nothing that we really learn about this character in this web series that we couldn't have gotten from her portrayal in Justice League. They don't really add anything new to her character per se. Now, granted, Vixen never got a uh, a proper like introduction and backstory in Justice League. She never did. She was introduced to us as one of, as part of the uh, the JLU, and then you know they just ran and they just put her into the current storyline for that series so we never really got to learn about her backstory and whatnot so i will give the web series credit for exploring that territory but the whole i mean personality wise mm, okay she's younger in the web series than she was in justice league and she acts her age you know you're talking about a woman who's what 21 22 years old so, okay, there's a little bit difference there, but I don't think it's necessarily better. It's just different for the sake of being different. It's the circumstance for which that character is in right now. She's younger than she would have been in uh, Justice League Unlimited. So, okay, there's that. And yeah, we do get the backstory, but outside of that, nothing else. Um, they haven't changed her powers. They still operate the same way. Um, the way in which she used the powers pretty much operates the same way. Um... So yeah, they, they haven't really pushed the envelope on her yet. I'm hoping they do with her live action portrayal, but we'll just have to wait and see. Alright, uh, so some other thoughts I had about the series. Um, okay, before I get into that. Before I get into that, I want to I wanna point out a couple of... Uh, a couple of significances why this web series mattered and why I think that by the, at the end of the day it won't be regarded as significant. Alright, here's the thing guys, like I mentioned, Vixen is a C-list DC superheroine, okay, so she's obscure, she's lesser known, alright. Here's the other thing too though, and most importantly, especially for DC and especially for the CW and their DC universe. Here's the thing. Number one, she's a superheroine. We do not have many of those in uh, the CW DC universe. Matter of fact, they are notorious for being horrendous when it comes to female character portrayals. Um, the only character that they've actually done justice with, I think, is Sarah and Felicity. And they killed off Sarah, and what they did with Felicity in season three of Arrow was atrocious. So even the best two char female characters they've ever developed, they kind of dropped the ball on. Now, yes, Sarah is coming back in Legends of Tomorrow, and Felicity, they've already gone on record saying, yeah, they're going to make some corrections with their character in season four. Okay, great, but all of that is in hindsight. Okay, so number one, 
they don't really do a good job with female characters, let alone super heroines. Number two, and let's just be real about this, we have to point it out. Vixen is an African American character. In the uh, CW DCU, we only have Diggle. That's the only major African American character we have. Vixen, not only is uh, she an African American superheroine, but she's one of the earliest and one of the most popular in the entire comic book industry. So pretty much, uh, for for someone like myself who is a diehard comic book fan, who's a comic book creator, and who's also African American, Vixen is a prolific character for me. Um, now here's the thing: the challenge with Vixen is that you're taking this obscure character and you're trying to integrate her into the mainstream. Um, it can be done. We've seen it done. We saw it done with Blade in the 90s. We saw it done with Jon Stewart in that Justice League animated series that I mentioned earlier. Um, we've, we're seeing it now with Cyborg, even though Cyborg's been around for decades. Now Cyborg is being integrated into the mainstream. Marvel has managed to do that with War Machine, Falcon, and now they're getting ready to do it with Black Panther. Oh, and now they're also doing it with Luke Cage on Netflix. So we're seeing the integration of more a minority characters into the mainstream but here's the thing we already know what Marvel's doing Marvel they don't they don't mind taking the risk they don't mind taking the shots and it's paid dividends for them congratulations DC has struggled with that DC has struggled with diversity DC has struggled with pushing a uh, more obscure characters and so th the ante has been raised for this do I think they succeeded no. And I'm going to tell you why. The reason why I don't think they succeeded is, number one, you confined her to a 30-minute animated web series. This is something that is only available online. It hasn't been placed, it hasn't been put on television yet. And it's animated. And unfortunately, in this day and age, people still regard animation as being yet less worthy than live action so she isn't necessarily given the same sort of uh, exposure that other characters are getting in the live action series now can this change absolutely positively once they throw her into one of the main series arrow flash then she'll get that spotlight then she'll get that exposure but until then i think that dc sort of played it safe and they didn't really take a ch chance with the character um, if they really wanted to be risky, if they really wanted to be gutsy, they would have made a live action pilot and seen about giving her her own series. Now, they are starting to do that because we've already gotten confirmation that not only is Hawk Girl, who is another superheroine in the DCU, not only is she appearing in Legends of Tomorrow, but I, they did give the green light for a Hawk Girl pilot. So she could potentially get her own series. But they are also been playing it safe because, well, I mean, the actress playing Hawk Girl, I think, is uh, Hispanic. So, yeah, yeah, because I think they're going with the second Hawk Girl. So, yeah, she is Hispanic, but once again, DC sort of playing it safe. Um, so, yeah, so that, 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 that's been, that's one of the things I have about uh, the series, you know, and I, granted what I'm talking about, this is all, you know, production and business talk, right? This doesn't really have much to do with the content of the actual series itself, but I think it's worth noting and it's worth discussing and it's worth talking about because, ladies and gentlemen, here's the thing. If you overlook what I just mentioned about, you know, every, the, the business practices and the decisions made behind the series, well, guess what? This character could fall back into obscurity. They could drop her. They could not integrate her into the live action series. They could just consider the web series, okay, that was something we did that one time and now uh, we didn't get the reception we wanted so now we're putting her back into the vault. And I don't want that to happen. I actually want to see this character around also because, and here's another thing too, when you're talking about the live action portrayals, with what they've been able to do special effects wise with Flash, Vixen works within that universe perfectly. This is not, I mean, this is not a character that you're going to be spending. 
This is not a character that you're going to be spending millions upon millions of dollars an episode to portray her and her superpowers. No, Vixen can work in this universe. Absolutely positively. There's no doubt about that. She can work in this universe. So, all I would say is, if if anybody, let, let's just say, on the off chance, and this has happened before, this happened with my Game of Thrones reviews, I'm not surprised by who sees my videos. If anybody in the CW office or in the DC office happened to run across this video, please, please, from one fan, from, from, a, from a fan and a consumer to the producer and the product maker, just give her a chance. Give her a shot. Don't be afraid to take the risk. There is a lot of potential with this character. Um, if you if if you do her where if you do her well, you will kill two birds with one stone. Well, actually, technically, you'll kill three birds with one stone. Number one, you'll successfully integrate an obscure character into the mainstream. Number two, you will uh, successfully be able to introduce a female superheroine and an African American superheroine. So, well, that technically that's a double whammy right there. Four birds now. That's a double whammy because female and minority character into the mainstream, bam. And the coup de gras, by doing so, you will help usher in, introduce, you will able to grab a um, viewership and a fan base that will, will gravitate to her, that will follow behind her. And at the end of the day, I think all of those three, all of those four things are important. Why? Because that's how you establish franchises. That's how you build uh, viewerships that's how you build followings that's how you get a character to succeed from a commercial and financial standpoint all right so um my little 15 minute uh marker went off a couple of minutes ago so just final thoughts just to sort of wrap this whole thing up um i thought the animation was fine um i thought the uh from the narrative aspect from the story aspect um, and which is, which is another thing I guess I guess I'll go ahead and just spend a little bit more time talking about this too the the theme of the pilot because this was one of the things that really uh, really sort of caught my attention Vixen's main goal her motive um, in the pilot is to discover her heritage okay Vixen is an or uh, Vixen was an orphan she was adopted um, so, there two things, two very important things I want to point out what they're doing with that quest for identity and that quest for heritage and to know your origin and your backstory, that sort of thing. Two things that they've, they're hitting on with that. Number one, you have an adopted kid trying to learn their true heritage. Bam. That, I mean, how, how many characters have we seen done with that? I mean, Superman has done stories on that. Um, Spider-Man has done stories on that. Uh, so that's number one. But number two, and this, once again, the double whammy. What that means in the African-American community, the fact that Mari, her heritage, Mari is African. Okay, she's not African-American, she's African. Her roots, her family are from Africa. Now consider this, not only when this character was created in the in comics, but also consider even in 2015, that still matters. The idea of African Americans in America going back to their roots, trying to trace back their roots to the motherland. That is important. So you have both those things working within the under the same umbrella of that theme of that quest for identity. But then that comes back to my my main criticism about this web series. That is such that is such a potent and such a, 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 a huge theme, but it only has 30 minutes to develop. You need more than 30 minutes to flesh out that theme. Oh, I, really, I really wish they would redo this as a, a 45 minute pilot. I really wish they would. Um, because there's just not enough time to really dwell into these things. And then by the time we find out, you know, when, when we do find out her backstory and find out that her sister is the antagonist of the story, well, shit, that's all. That brings into it a whole nother bag. That's a whole nother deal. 
because now you've established a silver a civil uh, a sibling rivalry going on there. So it's like uh, I just wish the web series had more time to develop some of these things. Um, one final thing I will talk about, one final criticism I have about the show. And that's Mari's characterization. Now, if you recall, earlier in the review, I mentioned that the Mari we get in this series is different from the one in Bruce Timm's Justice League Unlimited. Why? Because, well, the, the key major difference, she's younger and she behaves like a younger woman. Mari in Bruce Timm's Justice League Unlimited series is very confident. Confident to the point you can't help but love her. She, 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 she's a bad broad, okay? She, she knows who she is. She knows her self-worth. She has that self-respect. She, she, she's bona fide, certified, put a stamp on it, independent, Miss Independent, okay? The Mari in this series, however, is much more vulnerable. She's less confident. Uh, she does not have that uh, self-assurance. She does not have that, uh, I mean, she does have the self-respect, but then, but then, here comes the problem. The stereotypical African-American female tropes. Um, oh, of course she's, uh, she has an attitude. Oh, of course she doesn't get along with others. Oh, um, of course she's bullheaded. That shit has to stop. That has to stop. Seeing that, I couldn't help but cringe at it because I'm like, why are you doing that? Don't, don't do that. You, you don't have to do that. Because here's the thing, even if you're trying to provide somewhat of a character arc showing us where she is at the beginning to where she will eventually become, even then, no, those are negative, stereotypical tropes. They do not lend themselves well to a character's development. They do not lend themselves well to a character portrayal. No, 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 no. And to say that you're writing her in that vein so that you can create that sort of character change, I think is an excuse. I do not find it valid. I think it is an excuse. Uh, and I'm just going to chalk that up to the handful of other terrible fucking choices they've made with female characters in their portrays in the rest of their shows. I'm just going to chalk that up to, all right, because it is the, because um, it's the same, it's, it's the same executive producers. Uh, I, I do believe they have different writing staffs, but that's all the same creative house. That's all under the same roof. So I'm going to say... You guys can do better. I've seen you do better. I know you can do it. I've seen you done. You've done it before. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, that's pretty much going to wrap up all my thoughts on uh, the Vixen animated web series. As I mentioned before, if you have yet to see it, the link to all six episodes will be in the description box below. Um, so, what else can you guys expect to see later this week? Tomorrow, I have my Flash Season 2 expectations. I will be doing weekly reviews of Flash Season 2 um, on the channel, so stay tuned for that. Let's see, tomorrow's win uh, Wednesday, Thursday, you will be seeing my Arrow Season 4 expectations video. I will also be picking back up my weekly Arrow episode reviews. And then um, closing out the week on Friday will be my final thoughts on Sons of Anarchy Season 7. I know I'm a year late on that, but uh, and it won't be so much a review as it will just be more of a discussion and final thought sort of video. So, uh, once again, I want to thank you all for joining me again this week. Um, please feel free to like and share this video if you enjoyed it, and please, for those of you all who have seen Vixen, share your thoughts in the comments below. And with that being said, this has been Larry Williams, OAW Command-in-Chief, finally back on YouTube, and until next time, peace.